Hey there, food lovers. Welcome back to The Wheel. My name is Will LeBlanc, and for today's episode, I came to Soji, an award-winning Asian fusion restaurant on Government Street in Baton Rouge, where 225 Magazine's 2019 Chef of the Year, Ryan Andre, is about to cook us up some delicious treats. But before we have every appetizer on the menu, we're going to find out what his favorite is. So let's go meet him. All right, so Ryan, what I'm gonna ask you to do is walk us through the preparation, step-by-step, step, of your favorite appetizer, which well, my, today is? Yeah. My favorite appetizer is the tempura fried cauliflower. All right. It goes topped with a uh, shio koji butter, jalapenos, and some nice bonita flakes that everybody thinks here is alive on top of your cauliflower. Oh, sounds exciting. Well, yeah, there are people who probably think you can't make cauliflower exciting, so let's prove them wrong. We're gonna do that. All right. All right, so we got a cauliflower cut up, portioned out. I'm going to come right in here to our tempura batter. Okay. Looking good already? Already. And then we're going to go right into the deep fryer, which is going to make it even better. And with the tempura batter, you want to go ahead and have your baskets down so you don't have to uh, worry about it sticking to the bottom of the That's baskets. A good idea. All right. While that gets nice and crispy, we're going to go ahead and heat up our shio koji butter. All right. Shio koji butter. Shio koji butter. Okay. Shio koji is a type of miso. It's kind of a little bit more liquidy than what you would think of a miso paste. Okay. So it has a nice kind of a funk to it, but also kind of reminds people of a macaroni and cheese. That's what kind of what they make uh, affiliate our All right. cauliflower with. But it has a funk. It does have a funk. All right. Funk is good. Yeah. No. No question. Especially in music. Yeah. <laughs> Slap it a piece. So our cauliflower is cooking. We're going to allow that to cook for about five to six minutes so it's not uh, crunchy on the inside of it. Uh -huh. This is just gonna heat up and then we're gonna be ready to plate after that. Okay, excellent, Very looking easy. forward to it. So what about the tempura cauliflower makes it your favorite? Cauliflower is very underrated and I think whenever you, of course, drop it in tempura fried it, uh, batter and stuff like that and the uh, shio koji butter that goes on top, I think it's just a win-win to get people to kind of think sure. that they're eating healthy with their vegetables and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, it's Tell me of, more about this uh, shaved bonito. Well, the shaved bonito is actually just... You ever think uh, about waxing it just to save yourself some time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Brazilian waxing it? Yeah, it's good. Uh, no, it's a, it's a dried uh, bonito fish, which is kind of in the, the tuna family. It's uh -huh. kind of smoked and then dried for a long period of time, and they shave it. I mean, it's beyond paper thin, so it, it's super thin where whenever it hits the heat on top sure. of the cauliflower, it actually just makes it start waving and, and transforming and stuff, so it looks like it's alive on top of it. Oh, that's exciting. Okay. Add a little bit of animation to the, yeah. to the dish. So this is actually ready to plate here. Give our sauce a little stir. Okay. All right, so we're going to go straight from the fryer here. Right in our little bowl, you want to get all them little extra crunchies of tempura to give uh -huh. you a little, some little anchamamites at the bottom down there. You can barely tell it's cauliflower. I know. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> but largely a good thing. For our cheese sauce, as people uh, claim to be, that flavor on it. It's more like a buffalo sauce, visually. Oh, that's great. The consistency isn't what I would have expected, but, but I mean that in a, a good way. Yeah. A little fresh jalapenos, and then now it's time for our bonita flakes. Taste one of these. They actually have a, right. a smoky, like, kind of like a, a fish jerky kind of flavor. Oh, okay. You're absolutely right. And I don't know that I would have been able to identify that. That's true. Bonita flakes. Bonita flakes. Part also, of a balanced breakfast. Also known as katsubushi, but a lot of people katsubushi? Can't say that word. So. Yeah, bonita flakes just rolls off the tongue a little bit. See how it's, oh. see how it's actually uh, moving? Looks like you got stuff alive on you. That's that's almost eerie. <laughs> I can I can see how. Um, when we were Just opening a restaurant, when we were opening a restaurant, it actually made a great Instagram little video of people thinking that it was alive and stuff. So that's our dish. It's so a, it's like a time it lapse video. I finished it off with a little Al Nori uh, seaweed. So I mean, how long would the Bonita Flakes continue to move like that? I mean, is there a certain point when there, there's definitely a certain point once settle? the cool the dish cools down, and also once it it finishes doing what it's doing, it'll actually start sticking to the cauliflower. Oh, that's extraordinary. So yeah, you pretty much get that with every bite, pretty much. 
All right, this looks a little too interesting not to try. I think I'm bold enough to take a bite. You want to jump it? in? Let's do All it. Right. There you are, sir. Thank we you. conveniently have these chopsticks ready. I know. All right. Not too hot. Huh? Oh, not at all. I got to tell you, I'm more than impressed. This was absolutely fantastic. But you know what? Give me the wheel. Himself. Thank you much, Mr. Andre. <laughs> well, needless to say, this looks absolutely amazing. Um, but, uh, you know, before we set our sights on this, uh, this fine, delicious cuisine, let's go ahead and meet our panel. Right here to my left, we have uh, Liz, who uh, describes herself as a Asian food connoisseur. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see what she awesome. thinks of, uh, of these offerings. Harold is a uh, first time visitor to Soji, long time listener. Uh, and then here we have uh, Christy, who says that she's actually worked with Ryan before, but uh, we'll leave it at that. There you go. The fine rapport has already been developed. All right, well, uh, don't be bashful. Please dig in. Okay. I don't know what to do first. Okay, what's happening here? What is this? This is our uh, cauliflower dish. So it has a shiokoji butter over the top of it, which is a miso butter. Okay. It has a macaroni and cheese flavor to it. Oh. And the, uh, the creepy crawlers on top is just a bonito flakes that kind of move whenever the heat gets to it. Okay, that's what I was yeah. wondering. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people were like looking at it. <laughs> I've been staring for it. I've been staring at it. When people sit at our brawl bar, I'd put that on there and everybody's like, <laughs> Why is it, is it a lie? <laughs> Are there things underneath? That are actually like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. bugs perhaps. So, what type of dumplings are these? These are a mixture of pork and beef. Oh. So, we actually make we, we make all this in house. So, that's one of the, the highlights of Soji here. The dumplings are hand rolled here, so that's we go through probably oh my God. a couple thousand dumplings a week. Oh, wow. This tastes like macaroni and cheese, like it's noodle-ish. That you. is so good. This banh mi is a lot softer, and I mean that positively, than, uh, than I would have thought. Like a lot of times, bread like this, you think you can just give back a little too much. Yeah, we actually get the uh, Dong Fong bread from New Orleans, oh, oh. but I like to I like to put it in the oven just for a second, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. Yeah, no, it's terrific. <laughs> Yeah, are you offended if we don't use our chopsticks for everything? No, no, <laughs> Is that why you give us a fork? Yeah. My chopstick use. <laughs> so will any fish do the, the moving thing, or is that just bonita? Uh, I think it's the way they prepare the bonita. They smoke it for a long period of time and then dry it out for even longer. And then they take it and they shave it super thin. I actually have one of the, the shavers and the thickest. I mean, you oh. can't even get it that thin with a razor blade. Wow. What is this? This is our Japanese pancake, uh, okonomiyaki. What is it? Okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. O okonomiyaki? See, there you go. Look at that. It. Nailed it on the first. Doesn't teach karate, though, I promise. <laughs> I think I'm going to over here. So, OK, I grab a piece. Do I put that on top? Yeah, that's some of the uh, tempura crunchies that go on top. They have some in it, but we also put some on the side just to add that extra texture. Awesome. What else is in it? It's actually. Uh, Mainly just Napa cabbage, some of the uh, the Kani crab sticks, mm -hmm. and a bacon grill on the bottom of it. Oh yeah. Get you a piece of that. Mm. What's in that sauce? What am I tasting? Um, Which one? Like kind of a strong sauce. sauce. The katsu strong sauce taste. is a. Uh, it's kind of similar to a, our Heinz 57 sauce. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes. The Thank Japanese you. people use that a lot on a lot of uh, items that they serve. Okay. Delicious. So this is more Japanese food or? This is Japanese. Okay. The wings are Chinese with a Szechuan uh, season on them. Oh, I see. Oh, the hot pepper. It has a, a numbing effect. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. People had... actually thought they were allergic to it. They were, they were, they were going numb. <laughs> I remember Their tongue's going numb. Time. Yeah. And then whenever you drink some. One guy was, but he just shook it off. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you learn how to cook all this stuff? Like di the different 
a lot of research. Uh, I actually, everything? I've been to Thailand. I've spent two weeks in Thailand visiting with a buddy that actually works at Chevron over there. Oh, so cool. I was actually able to, to kind of go around bits of Thailand and kind of learn some of their oh, cuisine. Awesome. And then three years in that Mongolian work prison. Yeah. You know, that was a, <laughs> a crucible, I know. Do y'all ever make Pad Thai here? I actually did this past weekend, I did. Oh, did yeah. It was actually a big seller. Okay. And believe it or not, whenever you and I was in Thailand, the Thai people didn't have what one of their favorites. Oh, yeah. Pad Thai. Yeah. It's one of our dishes here that we everybody knows so much because probably just something they've convinced us that they eat a lot as a joke. You know, but they, they never they never actually consume it. They just didn't care for the peanuts on it and so oh. yeah, So you just did a whole did you go to Thailand? Mm -hmm. She was over, I spent like two weeks in Asia going around. What was the highlight of the trip? All the food. <laughs> <laughs> but these are up there with it. She did the, a walk class. Yeah. Learned how to cook with a walk. I did. did. Mm -hmm. I got one in the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm pretty know, good at I don't it. Know if I do yeah. that. Yeah. She okay. wore a big old glove when she was doing it. it. <laughs> yeah. I'll be making the dumplings. But these are awesome dumplings. The, uh, the walks where they actually have a handle and they throw in it like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, so we have a commercial one, so the, the walk is actually oh, big like that. Oh, wow. oh, so you can actually just cook it. Yeah. You really walk like a man, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is no way to eat like a lady <laughs> no. with a wing, so I'm no. just going to go for it. Well, so my mouth is really going <laughs> to, it's going to feel like my mouth goes numb. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then wait till you drink water after that. What? Huh? What's going to happen? What is I'm so not going to tell you. I'm going to let it's you. Gonna, like out. flames are going to come yeah. out my mouth? She's going to recirculate the heat. You have a good cocktail. Mm -hmm. Should you get away? I'm a big fan of these mugs. It's uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple on this, right? I know, right? Back. That's like some uh, Indiana Jones stuff. You know, basically, it was just bizarre. Okay, that was really good. Does the heat hit me That's like so in a minute? You, you drink your water? Yeah. It's kind of limiting, kind of acidic. Kind of acidic -y. Yeah. These are really good. It's like my mouth is heating up more and more. Mm -hmm. He warned you. I know. <laughs> what kind of pepper is it? Or Szechuan. Szechuan. Is that close to like ghost pepper? No, it's just a. There's a, there's a whole region of China that a Szechuan region region. Their whole cooking is kind of based on. Well, that's like yeah, I've had Szechuan kind of chicken at a Chinese restaurant and stuff like that. Yeah. If you were having the ghost pepper, you'd know. Okay. Yeah. It's like Carolina Reaper territory. I mean, I thought he was having one earlier when we kept trying to talk. And... <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta get a pepper. All right, this caught me by surprise. This was fan. <coughs> All right, start. Take two. It's hot. You kept choking on that jalapeno. Oh, you sucked down a jalapeno. That was yeah, a, that was problematic. Yeah. yeah. Have you had the cauliflower yet? Just cauliflower. Thank you. The live cauliflower. I gotta, I gotta share it because I'll sit there and eat the rest of it. Oh wow. Oh, this is what you had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalapeno. Yeah. Man, people do awesome stuff with cauliflower now. The pizza crusts and all that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one of the things. It's sort of like, you know, so many people look at it like a really boring vegetable. And so, I mean, it's not much of a challenge when, you know, you show what you can actually I mean, I've actually it. taken it and put it through like a, a ricer to, or a shredder to mm -hmm. shred it up and actually turn it into like the texture of rice where you can do like a keto friendly fried rice dish. Do you do a lot of keto friendly stuff here? I was trying to work on a menu, but we've got so busy now that's kind of hard to step away and do a whole nother menu. Yeah. This is really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have a favorite or? I would say uh, on the table, probably the cauliflower. The cauliflower oh, like yeah. I can I can have all this sitting on the table, but the cauliflower is one up. If really you had good. said anything else, I would have really felt betrayed. Because you know, that's, that's what we focused on this morning. Yeah, I asked you to prepare your favorite. It doesn't really even taste like cauliflower. Okay, do you cook like this at home? My wife don't eat like this at home. <laughs> <laughs> what does she expect at home? She eats, the, uh, she eats the dumplings and wings she'll eat. and She just doesn't eat any vegetables oh. or fruit. Okay. She eats and all the cooked a... sushi with no vegetables in it. Is she a oh. five-year-old child? <laughs> Does your son like to eat food? Oh, no. No? He's, of course, I was working most of the time, so my wife was pretty mm -hmm. much a single mom, and he pretty much <laughs> ate what she ate, so that's kind of yeah. rubbed off on Pixie her. sticks and Cheetos. Yeah. Well, at least other people get to enjoy your, your good, good food. food. <laughs> you want to come cook for us? Yeah. 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 Okay. Anytime. Now I get, to, now I get fresh fish pretty much weekly, so. This is actually just an elaborate kidnapping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that we bring it up. So. Mm -hmm. These uh, Korean style ribs over here, the pork ribs. 
Oh. I know. I keep looking at those, and that's again well, don't another. Don't just look at them. I mean, they were presented or... very nicely. Admire and gawk, but but dig in. Oh gosh. <laughs> just like the wings, we're gonna look real cute on camera doing this. Are they smoked or how? How are they prepared? I actually uh, bake them in the oven in in the foil wrap and stuff like that for four and a half hours. Okay. Until they're falling apart, then we cool them down, and then I drop them in the fryer to crisp the skin on the outside of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I coat them with that sauce and we can put them in the salamander and just kind of... Well, just should dig in there. Sharing. Not sharing. I thought you were crispy. Oh. Oh. Ah, ah, dad, dad joke right there. That's, that, that's on the cheese wheel, yeah. Are you both dads? That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you need a rib now? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Sure, thank you. These look perfect. You do love ribs. I do. <laughs> is there a story there, or are you just, <laughs> aside, <laughs> aside from your Asian cuisine? <laughs> yeah, I hadn't, hadn't seen her, hadn't seen her two months. Yeah, and, uh, drops down the chimney. Oh, I no. just somehow get, I saw that y'all are cooking ribs, can I come over? No, yeah. you just said I cracked a rib. Right? That's what you get for putting it on Facebook. Mm-hmm, right? I'm big into cooking very simple fish meals, like, do you know, just something I can be done in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. I don't know if I tried to cook a fish meal if I could be done in five hours. Of course, you know, like I told Shannon, it was probably a horrible pick for this since I'm completely culinarily inept. But <laughs> it's what it is. I know good food when I eat like it, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can say, yeah, that tastes good. Or that. All right. Have you been fishing anything? So good. <laughs> I'm actually doing the uh, Rod to Bull Yo, next kayak weekend? tournament. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, ki you do kayak fish a lot, That's don't you? That's how you do the videos. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I actually have to leave here. To you, by the way. <laughs> he really does. I need to make some more videos. I hadn't had a chance lately to step back and do some more YouTube videos. Oh, it takes a while to do it. Oh, oh man, that's yeah. I mean, that recipe I did on there it took me all day to to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the po' boy thing? That's a bottom me sandwich. <laughs> all right, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Is that Korean now. or no? Uh, Vietnamese. I'm gonna try this. So can we cut stuff? So the thing about about soju is what we kept it at while we kept it at modern Asian and not modern Thai or modern sure. Vietnamese. So we didn't we didn't limit ourselves to one cuisine that's in such, I mean, the biggest continent. Yeah, well, it broadens your menu, yeah. but not overwhelmingly so. Too. I mean, it, it gets it to where I have an Indian dish. Yeah, well, and you want to showcase your versatility too. I mean, I was in Thailand and right outside of where we were staying had one of the best Indian restaurants I've ever eaten in, of course. Me, not graduating, you know, 4.0 and stuff like that. I had to look up on the map where India was. Oh uh, well, yeah. Notice that it was okay. in it was in yeah. East Asia, yeah. Southeast Asia, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's on Essen. Okay, I'm gonna put yeah, that yeah. On. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Where'd you? Yeah. So you did cooking school and everything, right? I did culinary, uh, Louisiana oh. Culinary Institute. That's right. That's right. And I've done my stunt, my stint at Commander's Palace as well too. So that's where I got a lot of my my plating, nice. my discipline, everything like that. So do you ultimately want to add more Indian dishes onto the menu or? I'm actually about to take the butter chicken off and put a tikka masala on oh, the menu. Okay. Kind of, everybody loves the curry, so I'm gonna keep it in, the, in that curry yeah, room. Sure. Do you do red or green curry? We actually have, I have a Thai curry on. I have the, the, uh, the what is it? Cow soy, it's a uh, masaman curry with coconut. Oh, yum. Yeah, I can't. I love my coconuts. I think a lot of the ingredients and stuff like that interchange. Of course, Vietnamese, Chinese, they they have their own versions of something like fish sauce. They have their own <coughs> style of it, but they, it, it kind of tastes, resembles, so. All right, does anybody else want the last dumpling? Cause that's what I want. Did you get it? You didn't get one yet? Oh, I had one. <laughs> this, this isn't Minnesota nice. You can take the last piece. They're perfectly cooked, though. Do you just steam them? Yeah, I gotta steam them. Right well, what's uh, like? What's one aspect of preparing food like this that you think goes overlooked or people just wouldn't necessarily appreciate or know about? That maybe they 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 try something like these wings and think, oh, I could pull that off. You know, I'm, I I think I I know what goes in there, but something that they just that extra spice. Well, I mean, uh, the, of course, the dry rub that we put on the outside is is a little over top with the Szechuan and stuff, but it's also the way we fry the wings and stuff. We don't we don't use flour and stuff. We use potato starch, so it makes it extra crispy. And then the way we cut the wings is something I learned, I picked up in Thailand 
That these w wings right here are the actual the, the middle part that people don't like to eat because they have the two bones in it, oh, and you have to kind of yeah. pick around all that. Well, yeah, we take sure. them and slice them directly in half, in between the bones. So now you can just kind of pick them up and look like uh, Tom Hanks off a of big when he's eating that corn like that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> for another one? Sure. Yeah, so it's just different little things that we, we picked up. Instead of doing just regular steamed edamame, I, I toss it in a wok now with yeah. sambal, chili paste, and, and uh, we make a uh, lemongrass and garlic butter that we toss oh, yeah. with them as Yum. well. So what's your favorite so far? My favorite? I love the cauliflower. Yeah. But second, maybe the wings. I love the wings. Okay. Yeah, right, I'm telling you. Well, she knows it's your favorite too. Like, you know, <laughs> she's she's, yeah, exactly. I think she you tipped Wait, your I'm hand. Just... <laughs> right. I'm going dumplings, go. wings, cauliflower. Are you assuming I asked you to? <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm going straight to it. All right. I've been studying it hard. Yeah, exactly. I'm really digging this. The pancake. Yeah. Yes. It's, and Tell it's, me the name of the dish again. Okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. Got it. And it's underrated. It's underrated here because. Like we were talking about earlier, that it's people just don't know what that is, so oh, I would they kind of steer they kind of steer away from it. Yeah. But if you get, if you say it's a Japanese pancake, then they like. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Okay, so there's it's like a rice pancake. No, it's actually uh, it's a tempura batter, but it's binding together with uh, napa cabbage. Okay, uh, right. Connie it's crab sticks, the green onions, stuff like that. So it's a good way to get your vegetables without you eating your vegetables, <laughs> without you knowing you're eating your vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Well, why not serve it to the boy then? Or to the missus. Or I mean, it missus. sounds like, you know, this is a... She actually tried it when we were selling it at the street food festival, and she actually said, well, it's not that bad. Uh, when, we, when was that? About a year. A year. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going more coffee. But that was the last time she's had it, so... Sure. And you guys have been around for about a year? Close to? Just made a year, so... Just made a year. Congrats. And Happy what birthday award? to us. Yeah, I just won an award, too. Well, and he, he himself won the award. He was uh, 225's Best New Chef of the Year. Best New Restaurant, uh, 225, 2019, and I w took the Best Chef category, so. Awesome. This, is, this is my second year winning that. In 2017, I won it with City Four. Oh, very nice. Well, congratulations. Now, are you from Baton Rouge? I'm from Gonzales, actually. Okay. <laughs> like we were just talking about, that. that's why I brought up Jambalaya, because I'm from the Jambalaya capital of the world. Right. And <laughs> but you say Jambalaya, Jambalaya, and not Jambalaya. Jambalaya. Okay. Jambalaya. 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 Or you can just say it without Jambalaya. saying no why and then just say jambalaya. 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 <laughs> jambalaya. Just have don't ever, say jambalaya. Have right. you ever cooked in that? The jambalaya festival? Yeah, have you no. ever cooked it? That's, that's actually some die hard. That's <laughs> really? Competitive people right there. Really? Man. Oh, yeah. Because you have to cook in a cast iron pot and you have to, it's got to be over open flame, like a yeah. wood open flame and stuff. So it, there's a lot of rules and regulations to it, but I just, wow. I never was a big jambalaya eater. Man, so I've never seen all every appetizer on the table yet. So it looks pretty that's cool. The yeah. That's the wheel. Yeah. That's the draw. That's the allure of the wheel. It's a perfect it's size a dinner. Yeah. The wheel can go anyway. Can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Jump right. right in. Yeah. We'll keep you in the loop. I mean, you just never want to go back, though. You never want to go backwards. No. no. <laughs> Always no looking retread. forward. <laughs> I mean, unless we get invited back for some second episode. No, I'm saying, not we, pitching it yet. Dinner. Right. right. We'll do the wheel of the entrees, and we definitely entree won't be able to fit it all oh, on the table. Sure. Well, and y'all have, uh, have a sushi bar here, too. We do have a sushi bar. We have a, a Class A uh, sushi chef running at uh, Josh. Mm -hmm. So he's a... Uh, What's his name? Josh uh, Pinyanavon. He uh, used to be at Geisha, and now he's with us. Okay. He's at Geisha? <laughs> Geisha. Oh, at Geisha. <laughs> I thought he was a Geisha. I was like, well, goodness, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. know, I saw that I look know. on your face, you're like, yeah, he, what? Yeah, I might have to uh, introduce myself at some point. Huh? <laughs> or he could come to one of the other wheels we were talking yeah. about. You know. The noodle bar is, we have, that's our ramen <laughs> yeah. bar. We have a ramen bar too as well. So you can sit at the bar okay. and they'll make your ramen right in front oh. of you. Oh, wow. How many kinds of ramen do y'all make? We have three different types of, uh, well, four different types of noodles, but we have three hot and one cold noodle. Okay. What's so we have babe? two ramen, the, the, the beef, Ramen is. Beef ramen. Yeah. I make it out of uh, beef tendons and like the scraps that we cut off for uh, sirloin and stuff. Oh, okay. We just brown that down. I'm not sure I've ever had ramen outside of <laughs> ramen in yeah. the pack. The pack? Oh. So you don't know how good it could be. It's just, yeah, you haven't really explored the the full potential of it. Yeah. You know? When you were kids, you would like chop it up in a Ziploc bag and eat it dry. Yeah, you pour no. the season. No. Yeah, no. we never We grew up in Baton Rouge. We didn't. <laughs> Right. Oh, so he, he had a, he had $5 I mean, not mean See, as if we didn't already have him, he keeps giving us reason after reason, yeah. excuse after excuse to come back. That's, you know. That's right. He knew he what I was talking everything. about. Even Chef knew what I was talking oh, about. Oh, I'm glad. 
part yeah. with it. All right. It's Nobody else wants a rib? Nope. I can nope. do it myself. Sorry, man. <laughs> so what is this? These are all... Ginger? Or? Well, I mean, your traditional Korean barbecue and stuff is served with a, a massive amount of pickled items. So we have three oh. different pickled items on the plate. Pickled carrots, pickled... Pickled red cabbage and pickled uh, soybean sprouts. I wouldn't mind trying some of those after you're done playing with them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right. And do they put it on the on the meat, or they just kind of eat it as a uh, side? Usually, you'll have it. You'll kind of eat it with with the oh, ingredients. Okay. Like uh, when you go to a Korean barbecue, which is a place I would love for to come to Baton Rouge, oh, yeah. but they're so expensive to open because each table has to have a hood vent above it and they have their own burner in the front. You and cook it yourself? Right, it's it's almost like going to a fondue, but yeah. you have a grill in front of you where they come and put all the meats on it for you, and you just kind of pull it off as you want it and dip it in sauces and eat it. Yeah, but you think that's primarily what's kept people from opening Korean barbecue here? It is definitely uh, that. Yeah. And I want to eat it with a full experience. <laughs> I mean, you want to know, it's, you want to bring it to a city that it's going to work before you open okay. something like that. Sure. But yeah, no, I mean, I think it would be successful here. Like you said, it's just a substantial investment. Well, it's a fun, yeah, I mean, it's a fun night out, too, just like going to Melting Pot used to be, just with the fondue and stuff. But it, you cooking it while you're talking and having fun and drinking if you're drinking. So drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Are y'all crazy on the weekends? Crazy yes, packed. crazy pack on the weekend. So make reservations of, if you want to come on the weekends. Yes. You can go on our website and they have a link to make reservations. And are y'all busy during the week too? Yes, every, yeah. especially ever since we won our Award. awards. Awards awesome. now our Tuesdays and doubled in business. Wow! So that's really good. And don't you do dinners too sometimes? Yeah, on uh, Mondays, on the days that we're closed, Monday. every once in a while we'll pop open for a wine dinner or a sake dinner. Or... But no karaoke yet. <laughs> Not yet. Get yourself a oh, private room. Doing, yeah. Like, getting, like the Hello Kitty and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we could, we'll do, it, we could do it right now. The like, waving yeah. hats. Yeah, I got, we got a couple apple. of those. We got a couple of I think the batteries are out right now, so they just like. Oh. But karaoke bars are just crazy over there. Yeah. So, you drink, Why? We went Why? to one in uh, Korea. <laughs> I couldn't find myself doing that. It was yeah, a little weird. I honestly can't see you up. <laughs> oh, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have sang or anything like that. Yeah. Just go sit in there and watch. It's a really great show to watch. I bounced the idea off of a friend of mine some time ago about opening up a karaoke bar here in Baton Rouge. Because when I lived in uh, New Jersey, we used to go into Manhattan a lot, and they actually have like dedicated karaoke oh, yeah. joints mm -hmm. where you go in and you rent a room out with like 10 of your friends, yeah. and it's freezing cold in there. And basically, you know, if you're oh, shy about doing it in front of, you know, total strangers, general audience, you can basically just sing whatever you want to with your people. You can bring in your own alcohol, you can order it there. I don't know. He didn't think it would work. Yeah, the one we went up to stayed up until like seven in the morning. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a punishing day after, but yeah. uh, an enjoyable time nonetheless. You know. So, tell me a little bit more about the edamame. The edamame, we uh, we steam it first, mm -hmm. like your traditional way to, to cook it, and then we actually throw it into a wok and kind of give it that kind of charred, kind of smoky flavor. Okay, yeah. yeah, it has a different taste. With the uh, the sambal and uh, lemongrass and garlic butter that we make. And it's, home. and it's actually <laughs> it's actually the same butter we were using for crawfish season when we were doing Viet Viet crawfish. Viet crawfish. I was boiling the crawfish the uh, the seasoned way mm -hmm. yeah. with the seasons on the inside of the crawfish, not sprinkled on the outside. And then we were tossing it in that butter, and then okay. they get to your table, and you just had to have like four of these because it was just everywhere. Yeah. But eating that with the pickle stuff makes. It Freaking awesome. <laughs> do you make the pickles in house? Yeah. You do? All that. You've always pickled stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever since City Fork, I mean, we right. get pickles over there. Are you okay? I know. It's just know. a beautiful experience. Just, yeah, you know, yeah, we, I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, All right. Need a, need a couple more yeah. Drink that sauce right. and maybe you'll cry. Woo. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you whenever you cut your finger. You know, were the tears from the onions or the actual. Uh, oh, injuries? it was from actual injury. Oh, okay. Yeah. When did that happen? What you did? Last Tuesday, I chopped my finger chopping onions. I was getting a little too fancy, like, you know, I was kind of <laughs> doing it too to quick. You know, and then you put the knives in the dishwasher and you dull it so then they <laughs> well, don't just, slice yeah. correctly. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're not one of them ones to just spray it and wipe it off and put I mean, it back I up? I should be, but with my bum finger. Yeah. You know, we're never going to do that again. No. I was like, I baby my knives. And I was like, what, is, what are the knives doing in the dishwasher? So you learn something new every day. I had no idea that dulled them. It, oh, it, yeah. heat, it heats the steel up like and kind of and weakens it every time it's you pass it through the dishwasher. Yeah. 
But then again, I never really, yeah, really, you don't really cut anything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, outside of, you know, things <laughs> off my clothes, tags and whatnot, yeah. I mean, if you're actually using it for preparation of food and stuff, it's best just to wipe it off or, you know, clean it with just a little soap or egg or something. Yeah, sure. My play knives. I mean, I just I, think, I, I yeah. never put them in the dishwasher. Just, that's why they're just razor sharp. That's how I cut my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so sharp. You know, the dishwasher is just this brutal destroyer of the kitchen, really. It is. My mom always used to tell me that. All right. Well, I think uh, judging from the damage we've done, it's pretty clear everybody enjoying themselves. Uh, yeah. Needless to say. So uh, I just want to. Yeah. They got, they got some peppers left in here for you. Uh, I might pass, but, you know, talk to me afterwards. But anyway, uh, Chef Andre, I want to thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. All our panelists for participating. I think we had a great time. Oh, yeah. Goes yeah. without saying. Thank you. Definitely coming back. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Are you done? You're not. <laughs> well, look, there's two more wings than this. I got some boxes. We'll be sitting here all afternoon. Yeah. Suffice to say. Tell me, now that we're finished, why don't we just uh, toast to a fine oh, afternoon? Come back again. Woo, lovely thank time. You. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, thank thank you. Yeah. If you'd like to see your favorite restaurant featured on the wheel, let us know and submit a request at, at gimme the wheel on Instagram or www.gimmethewheel.com. We'll be looking for